I bet you wouldn't believe that this Pokemon on the left is more rare than this Pokemon on the right. Why? Well, the Pokemon on the left does not come from this game. In fact, it comes from the Game Boy, but that is not enough just to know about it. The data for this is actually shown in the game and in Pokemon Home with something known as an origin mark. The origin mark for a Pokemon from the Game Boy looks like, well, a Game Boy. Luckily for us, Nintendo has provided a way for us to get Game Boy Pokemon without having to do anything hacky. The 3DS. There are a total six Game Boy Virtual Console games on the 3DS. Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. The goal of this video is to show you how to catch 28 Pokemon in the Game Boy that have the Game Boy Origin mark and evolve them into Pokemon that were never meant to have this mark, making them a lot more rare. Here's what you need if you want to follow along. A 3DS, Pokemon Crystal, and Pokemon Gold, but you can use any other Virtual Console game if the Pokemon is in it. Poke Transporter, Pokemon Bank, Pokemon Sun and Moon, or any Ultra version of this game. A Nintendo Switch with Pokemon Home on it, and some compatible Switch games that you can evolve these Pokemon on. I'm using Brilliant Diamond, you can use Pokemon Scarlet or Violet, Pokemon Legends Arceus, and Pokemon Sword or Shield. I started up this project by booting up a live stream and started Pokemon Crystal from scratch. And then I realized how slow the Game Boy games are and kind of made me appreciate how far we've come in Pokemon. I started the game with Cyndaquil, which is pretty easy since it's literally a starter Pokemon. After I progressed enough where I could reach a PC in the game, I then deposited inside of the PC. Please be aware that when you are depositing Pokemon into a PC that they need to be in box one. Once they are in box one, you then have to save your game, close your game, and open up Poke Transporter. Once you are in Poke Transporter, you then have to move the Pokemon from box one into your Pokemon Bank. After you sent it to Pokemon Bank, you then want to boot up your Nintendo Switch and open up Pokemon Home. You then have to turn on the 3DS transfer, get a code, and then send over the bank Pokemon to Pokemon Home. I hope I didn't lose you there. Once the Nequil was safe and sound in Pokemon Home, I sent it over to Pokemon Legends Arceus. Once it was in the game, all I had to do was a little leveling up, just like how you should level up by hitting that subscribe button so we can hit 1 million subscribers. And while you're at it, also hit that like button so I can make more videos about rare Pokemon like this. After evolving Cyndaquil into Quilava, I was finally able to evolve it into a Hisuian Typhlosion. But this one was special because it came from Johto and has the Game Boy Origin mark on it that is always going to show up in the game and in Pokemon Home. But I made a huge mistake. Doing one Pokemon at a time is not very efficient, so we're gonna go in the old Virtual Console games, grab all of them, and then begin the process. Let's go! The best way to catch all these Pokemon is by finishing the game and having access to all the areas. That way, when you go back to the games, it'll be a lot easier to catch any Pokemon you may need. This is why I'm using Pokemon Crystal for this one, since it has 26 out of the 28 Pokemon we are hunting. Also, it doesn't matter what Pokeballs you use in this game to catch the Pokemon, because they all get turned into Pokemon. Pokeballs at the end when you transfer them, which sucks because I actually use specific Apricorn balls to catch certain Pokemon just to try to match them. First up is Pikachu. I headed to Route 2. This one has a 5% rarity to catch it. As soon as it showed up, I used a fastball to catch it. Level 4 female Pikachu acquired. By the way, Alolan Raichu has no gender differences, so it doesn't matter if you catch a male or female Pikachu. Next, I headed to Saffron City and then to Route 6. As soon as I ran into the grass, I bumped into Eradicate, and right after that, I bumped into a level 14 Magnemite and caught it in a heavy ball. This thing is going to eventually evolve into a Magnezone. I needed a Cubone next because I needed to evolve it into the Alolan Marowak, one of the first variant evolutions of old Pokemon introduced in Pokemon Sun and Moon. So I went to Route 10 and into the Rock Tunnel and it was completely pitch black. I didn't bother to bring a Pokemon with Flash since I just needed to get encounters here. And as I was trying to catch it, the wild Cubone actually fled. Wasn't expecting that. I tried again to re-encounter one and then I was finally able to catch that one in an Ultra Ball. Capturing Electabuzz was a little complicated. I had to bike to the west of Cerulean City, reaching Route 9 and then proceeded to surf towards Route 10. In a hidden grassy area, I then came across a level 18 Electabuzz in this little secret spot. I threw a lot of Pokeballs at it, but didn't really succeed at first. However, after a few more attempts, I successfully captured the Electabuzz using a fastball. Mission accomplished. Next on my list was Tangla. Locating Tangla wasn't too difficult. I surfed from Pallet Town to Route 21. As you see here, the first Pokemon encountered in this grass patch was a Mr. Mine, absolutely a cursed Pokemon. But soon after, I stumbled upon a Tangla. I wanted to catch it, but it got away. I bumped into another Tangla, and this time I knew I had to catch it. It was a close call, but I finally managed to capture the level 30 male Tangla using a Great Ball. Great Ball was used because it's red and blue, 
like Pangala. Get it? And again, no point because it turns into a Pokeball anyway. The next spot I went to was Victory Road. As soon as I got there, I immediately encountered a level 32 male Rhyhorn. This thing did a lot of damage with its attacks, but it managed to capture it using a Heavy Ball. I think the problem I was having was trying to catch these Pokemon without putting status effects on them or bringing them down to 1 HP because that felt like too much work, but you should probably do that because it's more efficient. Porygon was on my radar because it has a third evolution, Porygon Z, that's not available on the Game Boy. You can't catch this Pokemon, by the way, so how do you obtain it? Oh, you head to the game corner in Celadon City, right over here. It wasn't handed to me for free because you have to spend 5,555 coins to claim the prize. But guess what? It was absolutely worth it. Here's the amazing level 15 Porygon from the Game Boy. Now let's go back to finding wild Pokemon. It's time to find Yanma. I went north from Goldenrod City, navigating through the area until I reached Route 35. I dodged multiple trainers to head to the grassy area. I came across Jigglypuff, Abra, Drowsy, and a bunch of repeating Pokemon here. The search took a couple of hours, but I eventually encountered a level 12 female Yanma and caught it with a friend ball. Next up was Coughing. I made my way to the burned tower in Yucatrix City where Coughing appeared. Pretty convenient place to put Coughing, where everyone is coughing because of the burned. Get it? Okay. I caught this with Coughing using an Ultra Ball. It's going to be evolving into a very fancy Pokemon in Sword and Shield. Look at this distinguished gentleman. Look at the way he is sitting. Yes, very distinguished. Mm -hmm. I went south of Yucatrix City and bumped into a wild Stantler. Capturing the level 14 male Stantler was pretty easy with an Ultra Ball. This Stantler had no idea it was also going to be getting a very cool evolution in Pokemon Legends Arceus. The next Pokemon is quite unique. It can only be caught during the bug catching contest held every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at the National Park. Luckily for me, it was Tuesday in the game when I was playing. By the way, you can also do date skipping so you don't actually have to wait for the day. Time to catch our next Pokemon, Scyther. You have 20 minutes to complete the contest. Let's get started. I ventured into all the grassy areas and came across a Venonat, then a Paris, but neither was the target. Moving forward, I encountered a Kakuna, still not the Pokemon I sought, and after encountering various wild Pokemon, I finally stumbled upon my target, Scyther. Heck yeah. I used my Park Ball to catch a level 13 female Scyther. I then returned to the Man in Green so the contestants could be judged and the winner announced. Sadly, I didn't secure first place in the contest, but little did they know I had first place in my heart for the most rare Pokemon award for Scyther because it was going to be getting an evolution that nobody heard about in this game. I journeyed west of Violet City, passing through the area on Route 31 and entered the Dark Cave. I went back and forth attempting to encounter the Pokemon Teddy Ursa that had a 10% encounter rate. I just kept getting Geodudes and Zubats showing up one after the other, which is really annoying because that's all that shows up in a cave. And then after a really long time, I finally came across the level 2 female Teddy Ursa and I caught that one using a Heavy Ball. But we're not finished yet. It was another challenging task. Can you guess the Pokemon next? That's right, it's Dunsparce. And this one has a 1% encounter chance to show up in front of you. I questioned myself wondering why I was even attempting this, but to nearing the finish line, I didn't want to give up. I stayed in the dark cave searching for Dunsparce. Encountering even more Geodudes and Zubats during hours of searching, I felt like giving up and trying this out another day, but... Just before I was able to turn off the game and try again, the Dunsparce appeared. I captured this level 4 beauty using an Ultra Ball because it was going to be getting the coolest evolution of all time in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This is Absolute Cat, by the way. The next two Pokemon needed TM2, which I bought for 2,000 Poke Dollars. This TM is called Headbutt. I taught it to my Dugong and headed to Route 29. Some Pokemon reside in these trees and in this location, we're looking for Execute. I used Headbutt on the tree here and encountered a Hoot Hoot. And then right after, I found and execute on another tree and caught it with an Ultra Ball. Now we have another Pokemon to catch using the same move but in a different location. In Azalea Town, there's an area right here where you can use Headbutt. I bumped into a tree and there it was, an Apom. Hmm, pretty convenient that a monkey's in a tree. I caught the level 10 female Apom and then Headbutting trees came to an end because that's literally all the Pokemon we need that need Headbutt. Hopefully my character doesn't have a concussion. Next up was hunting Lickitung from Mahogany Town. I went east on Route 44, passing these trainers. Afterwards, I used Dugan to surf across the water, reaching a hidden patch of grass. I was actually really surprised that I encountered a level 24 male Lickitung on my first try. I used Poison Powder on it to reduce its HP, and I eventually caught it in a Ultra Ball. I'm kind of wondering, do people actually like Lickitung? Let me know. When you reach the end of Route 44, you arrive at the Ice Path, where you can find two Pokemon that we are hunting, Swinub and Sneasel. The catch is that one can be encountered during the day, and the other one can be found at night. I first went after Swinub, a daytime Pokemon, and captured it. Sneasel 
appears at night, proved to be a little more challenging because it had a 10% rarity to show up. But after trying for a while, I was finally able to encounter this Pokemon and catch the male Sneasel. Leaving Blackthorn, I journeyed southward to Route 45. When I arrived, I walked back and forth on the grassy patch. Once again, luck was on my side and I encountered a level 24 female Gligar. And after several tries, I caught it with an Ultra Ball. When playing a Gen 2 game, there's one Pokemon you just have to catch, and that is the shiny red Gyarados that is located in the Lake of Rage. This literally has nothing to do with this video, it's just a bonus rare Pokemon that everyone must catch when you play a Gen 2 game. I ran into it as fast as possible with Surf, and I eventually got it. And that is a red shiny rare Gyarados added to my collection. It is the shiny Pokemon. I found Magmar in the Silver Cave. I had to go far into the cave where it was hard to see, so I taught a Pokemon Flash to lighten up the place. I met this level 45 female Magmar and caught her with an Ultra Ball. Mischievous was a Pokemon that can only show up at night in the Silver Cave. I changed the time to night and finally encountered it. I caught it and it was level 45 male Mischievous and I used that Ultra Ball for this one too. Pretty sure the Ultra Ball is probably the easiest ball to use for all these Pokemon. Another Pokemon that we need to catch at night is a Murkrow. So since it was nighttime, I took advantage of this. I hurried to Route 7 in Kanto and searched the grassy spot. Luckily, I met a level 17 female Murkrow right away. After handling Peck, Haze, and other moves from Murkrow, I caught it with my trusty Ultra Ball. Totally forgot to mention this one early, but when you play the game, you'll be getting a Togepi egg in Violet City. This one's pretty simple. All you gotta do is just keep it in your party and walk around until it hatches. And in due time, you'll be getting your Togepi, which you'll be eventually evolving into Togetic and Togekiss in a different game. Now let's talk about Eevee because we need three in future games, Leafeon, Glaceon, and Sylveon. You receive your first Eevee as a gift in Celadon City, right over here. To obtain the other two Eevee, you must learn about Bree in the game. In Pokemon Crystal, you need to catch a Ditto, as I just did, or any other compatible Pokemon, but Ditto is just a lot easier. Next, head to the daycare center and hand over your gifted Eevee and the Ditto you caught to the daycare people. After a few hours, when you return back to them, you have to make sure the old man is standing outside the house in the back. That's how you know you have an egg ready for you. Get the Eevee egg from him, place the egg in your party and ride your bike around until it hatches. Then you'll have your second Eevee, and then you just repeat this again, and then you'll have your third Eevee, and just like that, we have three Eevees with the Game Boy mark. Now let's switch gears and focus on on Pokemon Gold, where I'm going to be catching the last two Pokemon that were not available in Pokemon Crystal. First, we'll visit the Lake of Rage and go south from there, and then explore this grassy area. And then, after encountering a Pidgeotto and Mareep, I met my level 15 male Giraffering. Yes, the Pokemon that also gets an evolution in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Finally, the last Pokemon is Mankey, which is located east of Mahogany Town in a grassy patch. I encountered the Mankey and successfully captured it. This thing is going to get so angry, by the way, that it's going to die in generation nine. So just, just be prepared for your Mankey to die. Now that we have all the Pokemon, it's time to evolve them. Gather all the Pokemon from both Crystal and Gold and place them into box one of both the games. After that, we're gonna go into Poke Transporter and send them over to Pokemon Bank. The first three Pokemon that we're gonna evolve are Pikachu, Cubone, and Execute. These are the only Pokemon going from Pokemon Bank into Pokemon Sun. Each of these Pokemon look normal, but when they evolve, they adapt to the form of the game they are in. So they would evolve into their Alolan forms. That means you can only come to this game for an Alolan evolution. On Kony Kony City in Akala Island, there's a shop that sells evolution stones. I picked some stones up here and went right to evolving. Pikachu was easy to evolve into an Alolan Raichu, which is so cool, and it actually floats on its tail like an actual surfing Pikachu, but it's Raichu. I used a grass stone on Executive to get the giant Alolan Dragon-type Executor, which was a complete shock to be a Dragon-type back in the day. And for Cubone to evolve into Alolan Marowak, it had to be done at level 28 while it's nighttime. Once I got all three Alolan evolution, I put them in my PC box, saved and closed the game, and then I shipped them from Pokemon Sun and Moon right back into Pokemon Bank in the rare Pokemon Game Boy box. After that, I sent all the Pokemon from Bank into Pokemon Home with the code transfer, since we didn't need the 3DS anymore. From Pokemon Home, I sent over Coughing and Eevee to Pokemon Sword. At level 35, Coughing will evolve into Weezing, but since we are in the Galar region, the evolution will always be a Galarian Weezing, which is a Poison Fairy type. After a little bit of a grind, I got the evolution. In order to evolve, an Eevee into Sylveon, it must know a fairy move and have high friendship in order to do the evolution. I went to a Pokemon Center and talked to a movie learner so I can get a fairy move on this Eevee, because fairy moves didn't exist back in Pokemon Crystal. If you didn't know, experienced candies from Raid Dens and Sword and Shield actually raised the friendship level. So I gave it some candies and leveled it up and it just evolved into a Sylveon. Pretty easy. It's crazy to think that the Eevee I got wasn't even made to turn into a Sylveon. 
Next up, I sent over a Magnemite, two Eevees, Apom, Yanma, Tangla, Swinub, and Lickitung to Brilliant Diamond from Pokemon Home. For this game, I just used a Guard Chomp to lead my party so I could just level really easily thanks to our experience share. Everyone's favorite feature that you can't turn off. I got my Magnemite to evolve into a Magneton at level 30, and then I just used a Thunderstone to get Magnezone. So that was pretty easy. I went to the Mossy Stone in Eternal Forest and battled a Pokemon, and my Eevee just evolved into a Leafeon. I know you could just use a Leaf Stone now, but I wanted that rock to serve a purpose in the game because it just sits there doing nothing. And because I did that, I also went to the Ice Rock near Snow Point City, battled some Pokemon there, and then the other Eevee I had evolved into a Glaceon. Now I have all three Eevees done with their Game Boy Marks. Now it's time for some Pokemon knowledge, because this is not that easy to remember because I had a hard time. Here are moves that cross-evolution Pokemon need to evolve. Apom evolves into Ambipom after learning the move Double Hit at level 32. I think of its evolutions, two big tail hands, things as a way to remember because it double hits stuff. Yanma, Tangla, and Piloswine all need a ancient power as a move in order to evolve. Yanma evolves into Yanmega with that move at level 33. Tangla evolves into Tangrowth with ancient power at level 24. Swinub at level 33 evolves into Piloswine, and once Piloswine learns the move, ancient power, it evolves into Mamoswine. Think of it like this. Vines are ancient, dragonflies are ancient, and mammoths are ancient. Yep, that's all I got for you, but it works. Just try to remember that whenever you play another Pokemon game. Next up on the list is Lickitung. Now, Lickitung has to learn the move rollout in order for it to evolve into Licky Licky, but usually you're able to find higher level Lickitung. So by the time you catch a Lickitung, it should already have the move available to learn rollout and just relearn it at a move relearner, or it's already on your Pokemon and you just have to level up once and you'll have yourself a Licky Licky. After completing this task, I sent all these Pokemon back to Pokemon Home. Now we're putting Brilliant Diamond away. Next up, we're going to be talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus. The first Pokemon I wanted to evolve were the ones that got new evolutions in Legends Arceus. So I transferred out my Scyther, Teddy Ursa, and Stantler. For Scyther, you need something called Black Aggurite. In order to get this, you need to defeat Graveler in battle. Just look for moving rocks in higher level areas or knock out a Graveler, and you should be able to get one easily. After that, just open up my inventory, put it on my Scyther, and it evolved into a Cleaver. Next up on the list was evolving my Teddy Ursa. I did some battling and got to level 30, working evolve into an Ursaring. After that, I needed to find an item called Peat Moss, which funny enough, you need to use the Mount Ride Ursa Luna to find it. I found mine here in the Crimson Mirelands, and it took a bit to actually get one. After that, I headed over to the camp and had to keep pressing Knight and open up my menu to see if I can evolve Ursaring as you have to wait for a full moon. So they kind of made it a little bit difficult here finding the item and then waiting for a full moon. By the way, you don't have to look at the sky to tell if it's a full moon. You just have to see if you can evolve your Pokemon. After a couple of nights, it showed up and I was able to easily evolve it into an Ursa Luna. Not so easy, but I did it. Next up was Stantler. And in order to evolve this Pokemon, you have to learn Psy Shield Bash, since it's a new move. Now, once you learn that move, you have to get it to a specific level at 31, where it learns the agile version of Psychic Bash. So after doing that 20 times, I then evolved it into a Weird Deer. Is it Weird Deer or Weird Deer? I don't know. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, there's a cool mechanic known as space-time distortions, and they drop a lot of stuff, from shards to items to sell for money. But most importantly, these things have tons and tons of evolution items. The only problem is you have to wait for these time distortions to spawn. After doing a couple of these space-time distortions, you should have some nice evolution items to start evolving Pokemon. The big benefit of doing this in Legends Arceus is that you don't have to trade Pokemon to evolve it in this game. It's a very simple player focused game and it works out very well. Use Legends Arceus whenever you can to evolve Pokemon that usually you would have to trade for. I put the Magmarizer on my Magmar and got myself a Magmortar. I put the Electrolyzer on my Electabuzz and got myself an Electivire. Surprisingly, all these Pokemon for the Game Boy are pretty tiny. Now, if you don't want to hang around and wait for a space-time distortion, you can go around and collect some satchels. A big problem I had in this game was that I died a lot and it became such a meme on Twitter that people kept tweeting at me that they found my satchels. Anyway, once you get your satchels, you can collect points, and when you head back to the main town, there's a shop lady that you can trade with for certain evolution items using all the points you collected from picking up these satchels.
I evolved my Sneasel using a Razor Claw into a Weavile. You can't get Sneasler because its pre-evolution is a different variant of Sneasel, the Hisuian Sneasel. I evolved my Gligar into Gliscor using the Razor Fang. I just look at Sneasel's claws and Gligar's fangs so I know which evolution item is for what. I used to always get confused with these ones as well. For both Mistrevious and Murkrow, I used Dusk Stones to evolve them into Miss Magius and Honchkrow. The Porygon that I got from the game corner was very simple and thanks to Legends Arceus was a lot easier because all I had to do was slap an upgrade for my items and got Porygon 2 and then the dubious disc and I got my Porygon Z. No trading, easy peasy. Togepi was the most exciting one to evolve because it just started as an egg in Pokemon Crystal. All you need to have is high friendship. In Legends Arceus, you just need to throw out that Pokemon and hit some trees and rocks and just don't let your Pokemon faint because that ruins friendship. Once it was maxed out, the evolve notification came up and I got a Togetic. To get into Togekiss, all I had to use was a shiny stone, which as you know, is very easy to get now in this game. And bam, Togekiss. Look at all these Pokemon. Rhyhorn to ride on was simple. Just had to get it to level 42 with some grinding and then using a protector item, just evolve it into Rhyperior. And it feels so good once again. Did not trade to evolve. All right, now to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. From Pokemon Home, you have to bring Dunsparce, Mankey, and Girafferring into Scarlet or Violet. You have to evolve Mankey into Primeape at level 28. To evolve Primeape into Annihilate, use Rage Fist 20 times, then level up once, and you'll get yourself an Annihilate that came from the Game Boy. Pretty much just a dead Primeape. Get your Dunsparce, level it up, and once it has Hyper Drill as one of its moves, it'll evolve into a 2-segmented, or the 1 in 100 chance of a 3-segmented form. I'm not sure how the data works for this this one since they all come from the Game Boy, so let me know if you guys happen to get a three-segmented one when you are evolving it here. Giraffering is pretty easy. Once you are level 32 in the game, or it depends what level you transfer your Giraffering from in Pokemon Crystal, you have the move Twin Beam in your learned move sets. Once you level up, once you have the move Twin Beam equipped, you'll evolve and have yourself a Farigaraph that came from Johto. And with that, you have 28 cross-evolution Pokemon from the Game Boy.